But not only does Christianity tell a story of a God who makes things new, one of the things that will blow your mind if you read church history, as I've had some occasion to do, is that it's full of people like you who actually labor to bring forth that newness through their lives. They wake up every day and they think, okay, how can we make the world new? And some of you did that today. That's what you think about. How do we make the world new? Whether you're looking at the ancient church where we were pioneering and innovating new forms of care for children, for the sick and for the dying, even pioneering new burial practices, uh, or in the Middle Ages where we're building new forms of music, new educational systems, new architectural structures, new governance models, and new economies that span multiple geographic territories, or whether it's the Reformation where there are new forms of church life, new art forms, new city governance models that Calvin himself uh, helped to build, whether it's the Enlightenment, where people are, as you know, building new democratic political models, uh, creating new scientific ventures, uh, new medical technologies, or, or even right now, where Christian folk are inventing new, new forms of agriculture, new market initiatives and in retail and hospitality, medicine and investment. The Christian church is everywhere doing new things to bear witness to the newness of God. And I think that is a staggering and wonderful thing. And it's infinitely consoling to somebody like me who spends every day thinking, how do I do this thing that I don't really know how to do, but I know needs to be done for the sake of my neighbors? How do I do that? And most of the time, I don't know. But what I do know is this is the work of the Trinity and it's the work of his people. So just keep going. That's, that's the consolation. And so as I turn to Christianity, I found not only a story of a God who makes things new, but also of a people who labor to express that newness in their lives.